Hello and welcome back to another LookDevX video. In this video, I want to show you production recommended workflows for creating USD stages with sublayers for geometries, for materials, and for material bindings. There are probably a lot of different ways of doing this, but this is a recommended workflow that I like to use because it's very organized and structured. The first thing that we want to do is save our Maya scene file into a proper folder structure. So if I go over save as, and I will go into my folder structure. So I have my prop root, then I've got my asset name, toy dinosaur. And within here, I have my different kind of levels. So I've got my textures, my materials, my geometries, my bindings. And now I want to create a, another, which is LDF for look dev. And my Maya scene file will, will live inside of this. So Let's just call this LDF underscore toy dinosaur 02.ma. So save this as. And now my Maya scene file lives right there. That is step one. The next step is to create a stage with a new layer. We want to save the stage and we want to make sure that it is, uh, we convert all the paths to relative paths. And then you can already see it picks up that name. I just want to name this LDF same way as the Maya scene file, and that is toy underscore dinosaur 02, like that. And then this is relative to the scene file, which is very important. So what it means, if I open up my script editor and I right click my USD file, I can print to the script editor and this will show you the relative path where everything lives. So this is perfect. So what I want to do now is I want to load in my geometry. So I can right click here. I can click that little icon to load in a sublayer. I want to pick it. I want to go up one level, go to geometry, and then I want to load in my modeling render geometry. So this is being loaded in, load sublayer, and you can already see that this is loaded um, as a relative path. I can print this. And it will print all the geometries. If I print my root here, let's print this. You can already see now it has a sub layer with geometry MDL1 render USD file. So if I save it, my, my main stage will now have the sub layer within it. So that is already a very good practice. The next step is let's create a, another layer. And now we want to create a material sub layer where our material creation will happen. So I can right click my root here. Add sub layer. This will create another anonymous layer. I can save it, save as. I can go to my proper directory, MTL, and I can just name this MTL underscore toy dinosaur 02. And it makes sure it's relative. So you can already see it has the nice dot dot forward slash syntax. Save it. And this is now saved as well. Uh, right now, nothing is in here. And then we want to create another sub layer. And this will be our binding sublayer. And I will explain why that is necessary. So double click it. You can save it. I will go up to my BND folder. And this will be my BND underscore toy dinosaur 2. And now let's just save my root stage and save everything. And now all my sublayers are being saved. And if I look on disk, I do have my MTL. USD files in the correct locations. I have my Maya scene file. I've got my USD files accompanied and my geometry, which is right here and my binding, which is right there. All right. All right. So this is the starting point. And from here on out, I will be showing you how to create materials, how to bind them and how to make things work and not confuse things. So first of all, let's just print our uh, root, and you can see now we've got those three sub layers as well. So that is awesome. All right, so a very important thing, and I cannot stress enough, it is very important that you are always targeting the right layer for whatever you want to do. Right now, my target layer is the blue one at the top here, which means this is whenever I do anything now, it will save it automatically into this root layer. If we want to create a material, it's important we activate this layer. So if I create one using LookDevX, it will be stored in this USD sublayer. If I do material assignments, AKA bindings, it's important that I activate this layer to do my assignments. The separation of this is not 100% necessary. Technically, you could have the bindings and the materials in just one layer. It will work the same way, but it will be a little bit more difficult for debugging purposes and 
a better production workflow for a pipeline approach would be to separate the bindings from the materials. Just imagine what would happen if you save the bindings with the materials and you load different assets, different geometries, the bindings could get messed up very quickly. So if the material is separate, you can always load the material sublayer to anything and then do the bindings in a separate USD file. Just it keeps it just very organized. And I just want to show you that organized workflow. I like that a lot. All right, so now important, click on the MTL layer, make it active, and then we can hop over to LookDevX. And before we can actually create materials, we need to have a dedicated scope where the materials will live. So make sure the target layer is your material layer, right click the stage shape, and add to prim scope. It will go into our hierarchy here. And let's just rename this to double click MTL. And now we have our scope for materials that will house all our shaders that we will be creating. All right, so we can now right click and add new material. We can go material X, we can go standard surface, and now this is created. I can right click and show this in, in look dev X, and then we have our material container, and within here we have our standard surface. So this is all great. So let's say I wanna make a color change, you will see that nothing is happening in the viewport because it is not assigned, right? It's not, we didn't do the binding just yet. Right, so if I hide the attribute editor, give me some more room to work here. And now I want to make sure that I go to my binding layer, which is the BND. And now all I have to do, I can go to my geometry root here, right click, assign existing material and assign the standard surface shader. And all you can see now is that we have a properly connected material to the geometry. And again, this was done in the binding section. So if I uh, save my scene, it will save the both USD files. And if I print this, you will now see what's going on. You can see that this will have our binding schema applied, that MTL standard surface will be assigned to our geometry. So that is really awesome. Now I want to show you an alternative way how to create a shader without doing it manually. So in our scope, Let's delete the material scope with its shaders. You can see the shaders are gone because the binding doesn't know where to look. Uh, what we can do now, we can, instead of doing it manually, as I said, we can just go in here, tab, and create the material X PBR standard surface material. And you will see by default, it will create the MTL scope and the materials to it. If I dive into the material container, I can quite easily change my colors. And you might be wondering, how does it know that the shader is assigned? We didn't do any binding because this doesn't automatically bind it to the geometry. If I print it, you will see there's no binding information in here. It works because I did not remove the binding and the bind USD sublayer. If I print it here, you can see it's still looking for MTL standard surface one which is this container. So that is why the, that the binding still works. So that is very great to see. And if I save now, nothing will have changed. But a cool thing now is to show a non-destructive workflow. You can actually hide the binding and you will see that you can toggle the binding, the shader assignments right within the sublayer. So that is a very cool way and a, a very pro argument to have the material and the binding in a separate sublayer. Now let's create a texture file to show our dinosaurs real colors. So the best way to do is you hit tab and you type an image and you got two options. One is an image with a capital I and one with a lowercase image. There will be in a future version the type displayed in here, but the top one is the Arnold image node and you can always display the types hitting T on the keyboard. And the other is the um, native material X image node. So if I type that again, you can see this type is ND image color three, and that is our default material X node. Let's just go with this. And if I hop over to the file name and the parameters, open up the browser, and I go into the project, under my texture library, there will be the ASUS CG EXR file. Open that up, and it will be relative to our stage location. So now quite easily, I can just hook that up. I can hover over base, it will open up and hook it up to the base color. And now you can clearly see the textures are assigned and we have a very good representation in the viewport. And there you have it. We have our GPU render cooking and our material X shaders are rendering just fine. Now I want to show you a couple of things which are important to note. 
first of all, we can always print. That is something very handy and it's very important that you utilize it because if there will be any errors with the LookDevX graph or anything that's not working, you will most probably have a good error code which you can dissect and make use of. Now, we do have our different hierarchies in the outliner. We've got our root geometry, we've got our another group here, and then we've got our shapes. At this moment, you can assign several sub shaders, but it will be a little bit hard to see where they have been assigned. So let me show you ex an example how this will work. Now let's create a new standard surface shader. So I will right click on my material group, right click, add new material, material X, and standard surface. So now we have two standard surface shaders. Let me show that in a new tab. So now we have this one right here, similar. Let's just make this maybe um, a red material, something like that. And we want to assign this now to a different location other than the root. If I right click the root, you will see that um, the geo root, you will see that this it has this unassigned material. That means something is assigned to this location. But if I now select my body, for instance, and I assign this material there, you will now see I can assign materials on a lower hierarchy, which take precedent, which means the lower the hierarchy, wherever you assign things, the higher the priority. So if, I, if there would be another subgroup and I would have assigned a shader there, then this would win, essentially. So um, that is important to note. Um, at this moment, it's a little bit difficult to see and to know where your shaders are assigned to. The only way at this moment is to either look in the viewport where things are assigned, or you have to right-click them and actually see that it has this unassigned material option. Because this one, for instance, doesn't have it. That means it's inheriting the material from a, a higher level, which will be, in this case, from this level. So what I can do, just to showcase it, I can unassign the root and now we should only have a material assigned. That's an assign. So this, this already shows the, the problem. So I did the bindings, or I tried to unassign materials now, which were actually bound in a different layer, so I couldn't unassign them. And I did assign the material the red material now on the material layer. So this is already the problem. And that's that's very important to know where you're working on. So if I assign this material now, this is now not there anymore. If I save, and if I now go to my binding layer and I, and I, and I here assign the red material, assign uh, material to selection, now it's the same visual look as before. But in this case now, we still have the material at the top level and now I can unassign it. And this is already the caveat that it's important to know you need to be working on the right layers. But this is now a good demo case. It shows you that the root material, which was on geo is now unassigned, but the lower one, which is assigned to the body still is activated. Again, I can unassign it from here and now everything will be unassigned. And I can now, for instance, pick my top material, assign existing material and standard surface one. And now we have our shader back. Now I want to show you a different way to see if you have any shaders assigned on lower levels in your stage. So first of all, let's make sure we are in the material target layer. And then we can hit Ctrl D to duplicate a material. And we can hop in here, right click, show on LookDevX, new tab dive into the container. And now just to make things a little bit more obvious, I just want to uh, create a color correct node. So you can type in color. There's this LDK color correct, hook that up into my inputs. And then uh, at the moment, uh, this is a color four, which means it has an alpha channel and it, this one only expects a RGB. So you cannot directly connect them, but if you connect the components, there will be no issues at all. And in the look dev, uh, correct. I just want to make a hue shift. Nothing will happen because it's not assigned to anything just yet. But what we can do now, if I go back to my binding layer, and let's say I want to select the body here and assign that material, you can now see that the body has been color corrected. It's kind of purple now. And at this mo uh, moment in time, you can already distinguish quite easily. If I right click here, you, sh you can see that there's show descendants in look devx. And it is actually quite helpful because it will list all the materials that live below the current location which you are clicking on. And just to make it a little bit more obvious how this will work, I want to go back to the material layer one more time, duplicate this, 
And this is now my third shader. I can visualize this in a new tab, dive into the container. And now let's make it um, another color, maybe boost the saturation or reduce it a little bit. And now we have three materials. And the third material, I want to bind this again all the way to the top. We don't have anything assigned at this moment. There's nothing here. The first assignment happens on the geo, but this will make it clear what's going on. So if I assign the third material now to the root of our scene, you can see the assignments will not change because the lower levels take precedence as I discussed before. But now if I clear all my tabs, you don't have to, it's just, I just do it now for preview sake. If I right click the top level, you can now see show descendants and I go untitled one. So now it will create all these materials which are in the current and below. So this gives me already a good indication that we have three shaders assigned somewhere in the hierarchy. And if I go to the next level, right click, show descendants, new tab, you will now see this has only two, which means from this location on there will be another one. And now it's a little bit of a guessing game because you don't know where it is. But again, you can just right click if you don't, if you're not sure until you see the unassigned and there we go. This has the unassigned in here and then we know where the assignments are happening. Or as always, you can go to your bind layer, right click it, print it, and then you can also see where all the bindings are happening. So that's probably the quickest way to dissect really where they are assigned to. I hope this video made it clear how to set up a good structure in your file system and also in your sublayer system and your stage. I also showed you how to assign materials and how to unassign them, how the hierarchy works and um, how to make things work in USD and LookDevX. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one where we'll go into way more detail in creating node graphs.